This is the perfect camera for any content creator who's a beginner, a YouTuber, for maybe someone who doesn't already own the Sony ZV-1 or who wants to upgrade and get all the features that come with the ZV-1 Mark II. The new placement of the quarter mount thread means that you can open and close your battery door without having to detach it from a tripod or an Arca Swiss mount plate or a gimbal like we had to do with the previous version of the ZV-1. The wider lens on the ZV-1 Mark II solves so many problems that we had with the ZV-1 where we had to buy attachments and wider angle lenses and it just became more of a bulky camera. And I don't know about you, but when I attached that little wide angle lens attachment to my ZV-1, it left the residue on the lens, which I still have there today. And also the wider lens is better for vloggers. You can actually hold the camera at arm's length and get a good looking frame rather than having it be looking like it's super close up to your face, like we had with the ZV-1. Although both cameras have electronic stabilization, you can really tell the difference with the ZV-1 Mark II, mainly because the focal length goes all the way back to 18 millimeters, which makes sense because if I had a zoom lens on a camera and I tried to walk with it, you would really be able to see those jitters and that camera shake. Whereas with this wide angle lens, 
It's not 100% like a GoPro, but it's definitely way more doable than with the ZV-1. Now, full disclosure, I wasn't 100% satisfied with that smooth footage that I was trying to get with the ZV-1 Mark II, so I did have to put it on a gimbal, but once I did that, I could actually turn stabilization off and just let this thing fly through the air. I'm not a vlogger. I'm more into trying to get cinematic type shots, so I was able to achieve that with the proper settings and using the ND filter on the ZV-1 Mark II and all of those shots that you just saw. I'm actually really impressed with the audio direction mic, whatever that's called because you can actually target where the camera is picking up the audio, whether it's behind the camera or in front of it, or go to auto. That's something that the ZV-1 doesn't have. And although I haven't really dove into the cine vlog setting on the ZV-1 Mark II, it looks pretty promising. It has that new menu system that Sony's been releasing with all of its new cameras. Unless you're watching this in 20 years and then this menu system is 20 years old. It does have touchscreen if that's your preference. For me, it's not. I tried my best not to use the touchscreen because I didn't wanna muddy up the screen with fingerprints. If you go out into a sunny environment after you've been touching your screen a lot, you can barely even see the screen. So then you have to use your shirt and wipe it off and then you're touching all the buttons. So the first thing that I did was try to clear that display as much as possible so I didn't have anything obstructing my view. But for a beginner, I think it would be super helpful to be able to go right to the touch menu screen and be able to dabble and play around with some of the settings before you get a little bit more advanced and you can dive into the actual menu system or some of the custom buttons on the outside. It does have clear image zoom, which Sony says is not a digital zoom, but it actually recreates the pixels as it gets further out. So this is a 18 to 50 millimeter lens. And if you use clear image zoom, which is 1.5 times, it automatically turns on once you get to 50 and you wanna keep on pushing forward and it goes all the way to 75 millimeters. Speaking about zoom, we also got an update with quieter zooming while you're recording. This is the ZV-1. And this is the ZV-1 Mark II. So it's way quieter. The question is, can you hear it in post? I don't know because I haven't looked yet. During that shoot, I had no overheating issues and I was in a warmer climate and I shot for quite an extensive amount of time in 4K24. I know a lot of people are nervous about overheating, but that is something that I did not have any issues with. I'm really excited for all of the people out there who are looking to get an affordable point and shoot camera with an internal ND and shoots in 4K because after using this camera, I can confidently say you will be able to capture some really great content. I'm Joe with the Film Alliance. Thanks for watching and being on this journey with me. And until the next one, have a nice week.